basically, it looks like a very thin, light emulsion. I think of like a wet lotion. Very wet. <laughs> That's how I like it, I guess. <laughs> Welcome back. This is the Chemist Confessions podcast. I'm Victoria. And I'm Gloria. And this is a human conversation on all the skincare science we talk about daily. Today's episode is going to be decoding AOX and mainly vitamin C products. Yeah. I think every year around springtime, there's a whole slew of new vitamin C products that comes out. Yep. Uh, Maybe you're tired of hearing about vitamin C already, mm -hmm. and then that's why a lot of brands get very creative in terms of what types of products you can now find vitamin C in. Mm -hmm. And we will get into it a little bit later in the episode on what formats are actually worth trying. Yeah, totally. But first things first, how about a bit of a brand update? We have new website. We have new website. <laughs> <laughs> kind of? We about? Are. Soon? Yes. Close? Will I it be launched by then? It should be launched by then. <laughs> if you're listening to this podcast and our new website is not yet live, <laughs> it is a tragedy. <laughs> so it should be yeah. there. So um, yeah, right now we are just, we're pretty close to debugging and troubleshooting, um, which means we're super close and we can't wait. If anything, if you haven't, if it's not up, here's a quick screenshot of what the main page will look like um and we are super excited uh just finally i think for us all the content mm -hmm. and products are just displayed the way we like them with lots of education and all the little like details that we really wanted to share which basically basic shopify couldn't do for us yeah so of uh in the new website i'm most excited about three new sections mm. One is our product page revamp. I think yes. we add a lot more Easter egg to it. Yeah. The way you can scroll through it and learn a little bit about the why and how we created a product. Totally. I think that was really exciting for me to see uh, in action. Mm -hmm. And then the second part is a learn hub because we finally kind of consolidated, you know, where you can find the podcast. Mm -hmm. The blog is in a much better organized fashion now. And um, it's just you can get a taste of our Chemistverse content in one go there. And last thing is completely new to the website is the recipe part. Yeah, yeah. I think that one, um, that page is really a quick routine builder um, mm -hmm. based on different scenarios that you guys might have. And it's just a way to help people quickly get a sense of how to incorporate our products with their existing SKUs um, and even like products that we don't carry like sunscreen. Yep how to even layer and think about all of that. We just knew it was like such a missing piece that mm. we try to incorporate in the blog, but let's be honest, not everyone makes it to the to the routine builder. So yeah. Sometimes I don't know how to find a routine <laughs> builder blog post anymore. Yeah, yeah. And I think for us, the other thing is our incubator, we finally will have a home for that as yes. well. So stay tuned because once we get through all this, then we are going to be rolling with our first incubator of the year slash two year almost going on yeah two years. yeah i think during covid it was a little awkward yes, for people to receive totally. random products to try yeah but we're definitely ramping back up we've been really hard at work at the labs we yeah. have some exciting new SKUs coming up Yee! so keep an eye out and check out the new website si sign up for our email list if you haven't yet because we'll yeah. run a series of promos around the new website launch yeah and then the second thing is, you know, now that the sunscreen challenge has wrapped, we've actually been getting a lot of requests for different challenges. So if you guys are wondering what the next big social content challenge will be, um, actually feel free to let us know. Gloria and I, generally our headspace is in the cleanser realm, but you yes. let us know. Yeah, we have, um, I think cleansers is another one where decodes and more sciencey deep dives aren't necessarily always helpful in terms of helping people shop. So it, to me, it definitely makes sense as a next task to um, suss out what our personal favorites are mm -hmm. and what we learn along the journey. But cleansers are another funky category. So in terms of how we test, we have some ideas. But if there's something that that's on your mind in terms of how we should test a cleanser, definitely let us know. Yeah, for sure. 
other than that, uh, as a thank you guys, please use our promo code ChemistCoin for $5 off your first order as just a thank you to our all you podcast listeners and viewers that support us in this realm because we'll say this is by far probably one of our more favorites favorites i think it's Favorite. definitely more therapeutic <laughs> yeah i think when we first started the podcast um those of you who's been around for a long time know that we used to have a drink or two yes. along with recording yes. and that was out of necessity it wasn't that long ago it really wasn't it really wasn't <laughs> but at that point like people thought it was like a hobby which i mean kind of was, but, it was at, yeah. but at the same time it was like i gotta be a yeah. little tipsy but yeah. now we can do a drive <laughs> Gloria is saying that very kindly in solidarity with me, but yes. <laughs> I love yes, it, we're Victoria. Surviving. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So with that, let's get into the news. In the news. What do we have today, Victoria? Okay. So remember how last time we did the news, there was semblance of like lawsuits and claims and stuff yes. getting flagged. All right. Well, I've got another one for you. So... P&G is actually facing a class action lawsuit. Just and... another Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Big corporate realm. Yeah. So uh, this one is pretty interesting. And I think as a consumer, we probably all feel this pain. Mm -hmm. um, P&G's Oral-B brand is facing a class action lawsuit over the unsolicited and continuous text messages it sends out to consumers, <laughs> even after they opted out. And the plaintiff claims that she did not give permission or request communication from her toothpaste and toothbrush brand, but received multiple messages even after she responded with her own stating stop. So that is the current class action lawsuit going around. I, I had a good laugh at this news because I was telling Victoria, I was like, man, I bet some like intern just got fired because it just sounds like such a rookie yes. little mistake that like, totally. someone forgot to turn something off. And yeah. also, I kind of feel for their marketing team too because you think about it in today's day and age in mm -hmm. terms of email marketing, text marketing, doesn't matter what field you're in, mm -hmm. you feel the pressure to partake, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you have to. But who the heck ever wants to receive text from your toothpaste? <laughs> like, how do you convince someone that, like, uh, thank yes, you for this subscribing? Is good customer relations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is your dental hygiene genie <laughs> brought to you by Oral B. Did you know that? <laughs> I totally agree. And I know there's probably a lot of people that are like, oh, yeah, like they sell my. Um, personal information, uh, marketing is a devil. I mean, in some ways, you know, being on on the industry side of it, um, yeah, like the, Gloria is absolutely right. They have to play into that. It's like everyone's doing it. I have to do it so I can get some FaceTime with the customers. Um, but there are there are supposed to be safeguards for this. Yeah. And, the I guarantee you the software that they're using, all of that, there are railings to prevent this. And yeah, they just clearly either just forgot or in some ways I'm like surprised. I, I wonder if they even realize that they were sending or spamming texts to Probably their customers. Not. So oh, oh, new theory. Oh. Tim Poyle has here. A disgruntled soon to be ex employee ah, there you go. turned off all the same railings <laughs> they have. And then <laughs> There you go. I like that one. Because, <laughs> I mean, you would think you're like, man, any normal marketer would be like, they don't need to hear from us that often. I would think that's discussion one, right? Like, how yeah. often do we really need to talk about toothpaste, right? Do people <laughs> really want to get a text say, hi, did you brush yeah. your teeth today? <laughs> Use fluoride? <laughs> want to try our new toothbrush? Yeah, got a new flavor. <laughs> <laughs> I like the soft bristles. <laughs> Anyways, all right, moving on. Something that Gloria super <laughs> cares about is the metaverse is still back. It's still around in the beauty space. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Um, in fact, metaverse is having something called its Metaverse Beauty Week. And so I think back in April, they apparently had a metaverse fashion week. And this had actually been, this is not the first time they've had it, but that fashion week, they saw an attendance plummet of dramatically by 92 percent which is <laughs> not, if that's not significant i don't know what that is not ideal hi guys welcome to our second annual metaverse beauty week crickets 
<laughs> it's like sparse avatars. And they're all paid to be there. They're all probably <laughs> employees of the host of this party. Yes, exactly. So they, they say terrible attendance, um, souring public perception of the general metaverse, NFTs, and all of that. Despite that, though, um, this virtual realm is still going on. And I think I was telling Gloria, it does feel like it's the virtual realms play at just like hanging on for one last life yeah and they're sure. dabbling into like the consumer brands to try to save them yeah i i bet there is a uh investor meeting going on right now of some guy going we are about to crack the code yeah. <laughs> we are figuring this out this is the tipping point <laughs> The drop, you might see a drop in 92%. You know what I sniff out? Opportunity. <laughs> we just haven't found our audience, but it's there. Don't worry. Yeah. Gen Zers and yeah. whatever is right below that, they are about to go to college. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is off tangent, but apparently, you know that brand Revolution? Mm -hmm. They actually just did a collab with Fortnite. Oh, so I'm that's like, fun. Yeah. So I'm like convinced that. Maybe it's not a trend, but they are definitely like fabricating this trend hardcore uh -huh. into the whole like gaming virtual reality realm. So, yeah. And you know what kids love for you to tell them this is super cool, guys. <laughs> really, I promise you it's cool. Yeah. So, you know, um, despite a terrible fashion week, they're having their Metaverse Beauty Week and it's going to be a five day event. Um it's let's see it's engineered by the creative en agency cult that seeks to bring cosmetic brands into the metaverse and brands that are participating are not small these are brands including neutrogena and even lush so wow yeah i was like wow okay so they're really going all in i bet these like companies um after apple's announcement that they're coming out with their own virtual like the uh, <clears throat> virtual reality goggles they're probably like oh my god new life new life yeah. if apple's doing it, it must be we're still on the right track yeah <laughs> no seriously and it, i i just thought it was kind of an interesting stat i think this is kind of that weird like i don't know if it's just like they're just looking at the numbers and they're like just brute force like try to capitalize on the numbers mm. but remember how we were talking about roblox and how they want to do some sort of like makeup collab there yeah well they really want to capitalize on the game verse mm. because like for example roblox they have 66 million users and so this day, these consumer brands are just looking for any chance at a new opportunity a new audience it makes sense i mean that is where they're hanging out and spending a lot of their time yeah i personally don't get it and i was like thinking about this i was like would i ever like go to one of these i like, try a metaverse party and i'm like wow mm. i have firmly graduated from the target audience pool also it's i feel like it's already hard enough to go to like a makeup tutorial party for yeah us. yeah for real <laughs> so to do it virtually i mean i know gloria she'd do a lot of other games she'd play a, a lot of games rather than just hang out in a virtual room <laughs> yeah i i don't get it but hey <laughs> let us know <laughs> yeah all right so the metaverse continues but Oh snap, PNG has been flagged again. Wait, it has been T minus <laughs> three minutes. It's like those That's right. incident encounters <laughs> we right. have been through exactly <laughs> 15 <a> minutes <laughs> without PNG getting into a class action lawsuit. All right, all right. Yep, so PNG has been flagged again, this time by the UK's Advertising Standards Authority. So another piece of like, uh, I guess, good news for those that feel like marketing is unregulated. So basically, UK's Advertising Standards Authority has ruled that an ad aired by PNG for its Braun Silk Expert IPL device misled consumers by claiming it would provide permanent visible hair removal. Other than that, PNG has been ordered to pull the ad and ensure that it does not state or imply that its product can remove hair permanently unless it holds adequate substantiation to support the claim. Uh, I will say that as of 30 minutes before recording this podcast, I checked on their official website. Absolutely still says permanently. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm in the catch. US. Good catch. 
But they, yeah, this is just the UK. Yeah. They're like, oh, the domain. It's they're just... like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not as positive news, but there you go. Yep. So there are, and I think if anything, hopefully that paints a picture on how claims are governed. Some people think it's, you know, this brand's international, so they follow international regulation. Nope, it's by regional standards. So that's kind of how complicated it can get. So sometimes people, they ask us like, how can this brand make this claim? And I'm like, well, they don't make this claim here yeah, for these reasons, but that's probably making that claim elsewhere yeah yeah and i also think it's a good time to highlight that i think there is a misconception out there that devices are even more regulated than uh, your topical cream serums totally it's kind of the other way around yeah yeah especially i mean just go on amazon mm -hmm. and look at all the devices that are sold yeah pretty bad yeah i think there's like a so, some classifications and then there's like some confusions as to like how to even regulate these what will fall under and i remember i listened to this podcast a long time ago i'll fish out the link but it's talk it's talking about medical devices mm. not even in relation to the beauty realm some beauty devices will fall under that category but i was talking about legit medical devices uh, marketed for medical reasons and how like why i think that one was talking about straight up like something for heart diseases mm. and how unregulated it actually is like there's a lot of safety roadblocks set up meaning to regulate it but it's so backlogged it's so underfunded that. that the amount of things that fly under the radar is insane i totally believe that yeah so i'm not uplifting though <laughs> beauty devices make sure the brand's legit and done their homework yeah and also i think the other thing too is a lot of these devices over, if anything, over promise yeah. a ton, especially because like the price point can vary from you could get something for $10 up to 500 And so I think that's where we are the most skeptical and why Gloria and I test very few devices yeah. or talk about very few devices because, yeah, at the end of the day, we just have to look for any sort of clinical testing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, moving on, uh, we actually have a new product launch we should talk about. Hailey Bieber's Roe Beauty has actually just launched a product called Glazed Milk. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll say the photography, the photography is edgy. It's provocative. <laughs> it is provocative. <laughs> and basically, it looks like a very thin, light emulsion. I think of like a wet lotion. Very wet. <laughs> that's how i like it i guess <laughs> yeah so i figure we can go through a quick decode with gloria and then kind of talk about would we use this how we would use this what skin type we use this kind of thing uh -huh, okay yeah. cool all right cool let's do it let's do the decode all right so based on the il we'll try to skim through because there's quite a lot but you're going to hit water, C1215 alkyl benzoate, coconut alkanes, glycerin, polyglycerol 3 oleate, more emulsifiers, and then we hit tocopherol acetate, sodium hyaluronate, more sodium hyaluronate cross polymer, more, more sodium hyaluronate that's hydrolyzed, sodium acetylated hyaluronate, ceramide MP, ceramide AP, ceramide EOP, beta glucan copper gluconate. Magnesium aspartate, oleic acid, linoleic acid, la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, hmm. So, Gloria, how does thought feel of this IL? I mean, okay, so first of all, I was like, tocopher acetate is a form of vitamin E that mm. you'll find often in products. Mm. It's a very clear indication that below which it's highly likely that it's well below 1%. I yeah, like at most one and a half percent, I would think. Um, mm -hmm. So if you look at the top up uh, above the vitamin E marker, you have a good amount of lightweight oils. That's what C12, C15, alkylbenzoate mm -hmm. and coconut alkanes are. Mm -hmm. um, these will serve to kind of smooth out skin a little bit. These, these are also ingredients that make it that milky appearance. Yeah. But I wouldn't say outside of being like lightweight emollients, they're going to be very good for like sealing in moisture totally you have glycerin which for me as a dry skin person i will want glycerin a little higher mm. than that actually because i if i were to put money on this i would say this is probably under two percent glycerin 
Um, maybe three. I don't know. So yeah, this is a weird one for me because、uh, without getting into the actives that's sitting well at under one percent, like the what little amount of ceramides and、um, ceramide and linoleic acid and other stuff, it's kind of like a strange formula to me because I have dry skin. I look at it, I'm like, I don't know what this brings to the table. Right? Will it replace my hydrating serum? No, because it doesn't have as many humectants as, say, an Aquafix or other hydrating serums.、Mm -hmm. Would this replace my moisturizer? Absolutely not. It's not.、Uh, it's not enough. It doesn't have any occlusive. Doesn't have body. I don't expect it to do any of that. Does it replace any serums? Not really. It doesn't have active. So I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> so I was most curious to get Gloria's take because I found it. Yeah, that was my theory. Was that for. Drier skin types, this would be a very confusing product、mm -hmm. to have in your routine. I feel like at most it could help oily skin individual that probably maybe they want just a smidge more kind of like nourishment、mm -hmm. um, from that kind of like emulsion with the light oils.、Mm -hmm. I was like, I could see this as a step if they're really oily and they just like haven't really found. You know, a true like lotion, kind of like your classical moisturizer texture、yeah. that's like、um, light enough for them. Yeah, at most. And、yeah. then I was thinking, okay, if you're in a super humid climate, yeah, maybe I could see that. But yeah, I I was thinking, I was just I knew or I guess had a feeling that Gloria, I don't yeah, generally lukewarm. And I really feel like this is kind of one of those like. SEO ingredient list. Oh my god, yes.、Um, if people don't know what SEO is, it's search engine optimization,、um, where basically you are trying to utilize hot keywords based on all the aggregate data in this in Google search engine, and you compile it, and you get this like stellar, I guess like optimized compilation of content. And so, yeah, I, it feels like an SEO of ingredients. Is you know, you got your ceramides, you got your fatty acids, you've got glycerin. Like it's kind of just those like hot keywords. Yep, but for sure. Again, concentration always matters. So yeah, kind of a confusing one for sure. Yeah, it's okay. Let us know. <laughs> I, I think for me, there are days I'm like, I, we haven't、um, touched or felt this product. Um, obviously, decoding ingredients. I'm always a little bit more critical in terms of like, well, what what role does it play in my routine?、Totally. If it's not at anything new, so、totally. why would I use it? Totally. But then there's a part of me that's like, well, if it's fun and smells nice, I'm not I'm not gonna hate on it. But I don't know if this one has any fun factor other than the fact that it's a glazed <laughs> milk and supposedly when, makes when you, you want, want to feel、donut. like a donut. <laughs> yeah.、Uh -huh. I woke yeah. up today. I am gonna identify as a donut. <laughs> Yeah. So if you tried it, do let us know what you think. Otherwise, we'll keep our eyes out for more product launches throughout these episodes. But otherwise, let's actually get into decode that claim. All right. What are we decoding today? All right. We're decoding three products. Sweet. <laughs> and the reason why there are three products is because. Gloria and I wanted to, without having to go into another antioxidant annual rant, we decided to actually let's just look at our and get an update on the vitamin C landscape. And I think when we're looking at this, we realize the vitamin C format has changed significantly <laughs> since the last time we looked. It is now Charizard. <laughs> 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 Charizard with like five tails. Yeah. <laughs> Charizard yeah. Plus. <laughs> yeah, and、um, we noticed that these formats are different than the ones we talk about, which、yeah. the main ones are. As a reminder, is your water-based serum.、Mm -hmm. You have your silicone suspensions,、mm -hmm. and you also have the powders. Right,、yep. those were the three main, main squeezes.、Um, but no, we are moving on. The first one I would like to share with Gloria is Kate Somerville's. Mega C, thirty percent vitamin C mask, and this mask is meant to be used as a wash off,、mm -hmm. uh, twice a week, and you basically apply it directly on face for twenty minutes, and then you wash off, and that's it. Yep. And looking at the ingredient list, this is a relatively.、Mm -hmm. It looks long, but it is in a in 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 some way a pretty simple formula. Yeah. 
because it has the first ingredient is dimethicone, second one is ascorbic acid, and we already know that this is thirty percent. Assuming they're not lying to us, thirty <laughs> percent ascorbic <laughs> no, no. acid. So it is um, mostly silicone. It, it, you can think of this as a high level silicone suspension. And what's interesting is I, I actually almost want to just ignore the rest of everything <laughs> there's a silicone emulsifier peg 10 dimethico mm-hmm. and after that there's a bunch of oils i'm sure some of them is there to help it smell nicer i spy orange peel oil mm. ceramide mp chilling at the end i would ignore it yeah. because i don't know what it is there <laughs> so yeah for the most part i would just look at it as a very high strength silicone suspension yeah agreed This actually does come with a consumer perception study. Mm -hmm. This is basically, they look at um, testing after two uses Mm -hmm. um, and then four uses. And after two uses, 97% reported, which means it's a consumer perception, reported that skin has a healthy glow. 91% reported skin looks and feels smoother. And then after four uses, 88% reported skin looks brighter, more radiant. 88% reported improved overall skin tone. 85% reported more even skin tone. So pretty general for a consumer perception. Yeah, and I would say um, vitamin C mass is a very... It's... I don't think it's a concept that's really taken off, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen it here and there in spas. I remember... One a long time ago, I used a vitamin C mask that's actually made by Skin Circles. That I don't think is on the market anymore. <laughs> but looking at the ingredient list, what? So we checked the Sephora's and Ulta's around us don't have this in stock yet, mm-hmm. so I couldn't get my hands on it before recording it. But generally speaking, I'm like staring at it, like, huh? I bet this has a lot of residue <laughs> after you wash it off. Or yes, try to wash it because it's a silicone suspension. And the other thing I should also mention is um, we definitely looked at some of the uh, consumer feedback, and one of the things they noticed is that it does have stinging. Mm-hmm. Um, and we should remind everyone is that vitamin C does have a very low pH, mm-hmm. and at that high concentration, for us, like that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think my general takeaway was. There are, we'll share some before and afters here where they show um, before and after after four uses. Mm. And I think while it sounds like a nice, I feel like this is maybe like a nice ancillary product for people who like masks. Mm-hmm. But I still feel like I would gravitate toward the AHA masks yeah. over a vitamin C just because if you look at the before and afters, like, and you see before and afters of typical AHA peels, mm-hmm. those results are still significantly better, I have yeah. to say, than vitamin C. It's true. Yeah. I, I, I agree. And I don't know if, like, um, this is the best way to get the most out of vitamin C, right? Yeah. Vitamin C is meant to be that long-term protection for your yeah. skin. And um, I'll be honest, I... I, yeah, I don't know what this brings. Like, this wouldn't replace my AHA mask. Yeah. So, will I be alternating this these masks maybe mm. for a month or two? But mm. then, you know, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, that's one format. Wash-off masks are a thing. The next one. Oh, sorry. Oh, one more yeah, thing on the it. wash-off mask. Yeah. I will say this absolutely also doesn't replace your daily vitamin C Yeah. Use. No, that's a really good point. Um, I wouldn't expect this to to have that carryover effect there's some mm-hmm. studies done on how like if you apply a vitamin c serum the potency is there for like a day or two like longer than you would expect but at the same time like doing something i i'm assuming no one's using it daily right no. so you're doing this mask like probably once a week right mm-hmm. it's not going to carry over for seven days it's not going to replace your daily protection yeah and we should also remind people of the testing that's been done is like they use vitamin c at 20 percent every night Mm -hmm. um and so think about that usage level versus one to two times a week at 30 percent. it's like as a wash off it's like the difference of like skin exposure to these topicals is completely different and so that's why we would never say like oh if you don't like a vitamin c serum use a wash off mask yeah for sure we would never suggest that okay Next. Now moving on. Um, second product is Peace Out's Vitamin C Glow Stick. And it is as you think. It is a stick. Vitamin oh. C in stick format. Nice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and let's 
see. So they tout a 6% vitamin C blend. Uh-huh. Going through the ingredient list, um, about six or so ingredients down, you'll see 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid. You'll go down again, a few more oils in between, and you'll see THD ascorbate and MAP. And then one more oil after strawberry seed oil, you'll see ascorbyl glucoside. Holy crap. Uh huh. Yeah. And that's all in a wax stick formula. And then one of the things they did have a consumer perception, although I have to say I would consider this more of a lukewarm <laughs> consumer perception study. They say after one use, 100% of participants said they didn't experience any irritation while using this product. <laughs> okay, listen here. <laughs> that should be the norm. <laughs> after one use, they're probably like, now tell me about it. How do you feel? Yeah, not no irritation. irritation. Oh my god, this is so good. <laughs> Why is that the bar? Because Gloria, it's a hundred percent. Oh, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> High number. Sick. Well, you would love that. Ninety-four oh. percent of participants said they would take the stick application on the go. Great. Cool. Ninety-one percent of participants said this product makes their skin feel nourished and smooth. After four weeks, 91% of participants said their skin feels more hydrated and plump. That's it. That's I, literally all they I share don't about underst- this product. I don't know what the point of, again, it's one of those products I'm like, what? So it's like one of those like moisturizing sticks yeah. that people have been trying to make happen for a long time now. Stop making fetch sticks happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the fetch cycles come back. Now we're back to this stuff. But I, I'm so confused by this because the vitamin C is like alone for the ride. Because mm-hmm. all of the claims around this consumer perception is like it's a hydrating stick Dick. that you bring on the go. Yes. I love that. I do, in a, in a way, I do kind of love that they didn't bother trying to make any sort of antioxidant or brightening or any sort of claims around the vitamin C. The C exists. That's all you need to know. Yes, and that it's not irritating after one use. Yeah, peace out. It's like, (laughs) hey, listen, good enough for me. It should be good enough for you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, honestly, there's really not a lot to say here. Mm. Um, Gloria's absolutely right. You wouldn't see this more uh, any more than being a hydrating stick. And hydrating, we mean like maybe an occlusive. Yeah, with the butter. You, yeah, that you use for dry patches or when you're in a pinch. But definitely don't buy this if you're looking for vitamin C. <laughs> yeah. And Not even the vitamin C derivatives. <laughs> no. And, and if, even though there's a ton of different types of vitamin C in here, the star is clearly 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, which remains to be one of our most meh forms of vitamin C. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So that's it. I think moving on, we can move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. The final product I did want to share was from Ole Henriksen. They have their Banana Bright line. They have a mineral SPF 30, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which uses zinc oxide. And so basically, um, this IL is fat, and I don't really want to run through all of the ingredients, Thank but <laughs> we'll highlight a, a, just a couple. Um, you'll see niacinamide. There's also THD ascorbate, like 12 ingredients down. Um, There's also things like panthenol. Um, And I think the reason why we want to talk about this is because there are products that are, there are sunscreens that tout AOX. Mm -hmm. And just generally, how do we feel about AOX ingredients, especially like vitamin C ingredients in sunscreens? I I don't love it. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't think, I feel like sunscreen formulas are, generally speaking, very difficult products to get mm-hmm. right. Uh, and so are vitamin C products. They're, they need a team of ingredients to support them and make them really shine and perform totally. uh, to what it's supposed to do for your skin. Totally. So they shouldn't coexist. I, I just, I have not seen a formula out there that has, uh, that's done in a way that gives you the right SPF protection and delivers the right amount of vitamin C protection. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. No, I think that's a, yeah, generally I feel the same way. I will say there is an LRP formula. They have an AOX. It's actually quite expensive. It's like $60 a bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, that one they do on... I think uh, Biclin, right? Yes, and they use Biclin. And I would say that's probably the 
only formula where I'm like, if you are someone that's like one and done, I'm like, I could see that being like a decent one. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, I yeah, I agree. It's just we talk about this a lot. Vitamin C and a lot of antioxidant ingredients, not even just vitamin C, hate the formulas they're in. Yeah. So that's already a problem. And then sunscreens have their own issues. So um, should you be buying a sunscreen with vitamin C purposefully? Eh, no. No. Yeah. But I will say, because this one uses THC ascorbate, which sometimes you can find on very high level serums. Yeah. Um, I... Uh, I would say I wouldn't worry about layering this mm-hmm. with the Euro vitamin C serum. Some people might also ask like, oh, hey, like, like niacinamide, what happens if I overlayer? I would say in this case, because it's a low level THD, I wouldn't worry about that. That's a good point. The other thing I did want to add is I can totally see this as an all in one. So mm-hmm. because if you look at it, you have your water stuff, you have some oils, you've got you even have panthenol. So I could see this as for someone who's like just really doesn't like layering. You can really consider this as not just a sunscreen, but as a moisturizer as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So that's really it. Um, Those are kind of the general three formats we see that's like been pretty popular this year. We will keep tabs on this realm. So you have to use one of them. What one would you use? Oh, God. (laughs) Yeah, I'm a minimalist. I'd probably use SPF. <laughs> I'd probably go with the mask. Oh, just for funsies? For funsies. Yeah. And I think I'm someone that, like, for me, a mask moment is not a super serious part of my routine. It's yeah. more like a me time thing. Yeah. And I, yeah, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind using that one. Yeah. And I think just wash off. You just have to let us know about the wash off. Yeah, and I would imagine because this one doesn't have a base in it and has 30% vitamin C, when you're washing off with water, you're dissolving a lot of vitamin C and mm-hmm. getting to skin, and which is what I imagine a lot of the steam comes mm-hmm. from. I'm not someone that's <laughs> affected by high levels of vitamin C, so I'm down to try it. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. No, that makes sense. Okay, cool. so yeah, that's the three decodes. Mm-hmm. Um, we are going to wrap this episode up with a couple questions we received. First one. While on the subject, a person asks, in your blog, you talk about water-based serums, suspensions, and powders. Is there an ideal vitamin C format? Generally help, please. Uh, (laughs) I would say no. Uh, Of of the three, I would vote for water-based serums. Um, They're still the more proven format in terms of skin benefits, like vitamin C, to backtrack a little bit. (laughs) That is the OG format, right? It's tested. Um, usually in combination with vitamin E, ferulic acid. It is very unstable in this format. So you'll see in our blog post where we talk about being uh, mindful of how you store it, being mindful of color changes you might experience. And that's why, and because it's so unstable in water-based serums, no matter what you put around it, it's slowly going to go bad. Or yes. not so slowly going to go bad. Um, that's why the suspensions and the powders came out. Suspensions are is probably my least favorite format. It's so first of all, when it's not dissolved and when it's just suspended in some sort of oil or silicone, there are some papers out there that's like, oh, it still totally works in this format. <laughs> but there honestly there isn't that many that no. prove that it works or you can't even say that it works just as well as a water format. Yeah. All we can say is like it does something, right? Um, but what that something means, I don't really know. And I also find a lot of suspensions on the market are really gritty. It's not done super well. I do not want to experience sandpaper texture when I'm applying my vitamin C serum. So that's my least favorite. I, I'm just going to add in like for people who kind of are confused by mm-hmm. or just need kind of like a even more basic breakdown. Mm-hmm. Um, just looking at percentages of an active is only one layer. Yes. Of prove it, or I guess testing. The next one is the format that it comes in can also dictate its efficacy as well. So that's why, you know, it's not always potato to potatoes in comparison. So that's one aspect. And the other thing is when Gloria talks about suspension, what that means is you're not actually solubilizing the vitamin C like you're doing in a water-based serum. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you're actually, think about like, taking powder and then like putting it slurry exactly in a slurry or some sort of like glue or paste and you're kind of just like mixing it in right 
that powder is still there. It's not actually dissolving in the mixture. It's because of that general like viscosity and whatnot that you're kind of creating this suspension of particles. And so that's why it's we see this as a very different class than the water-based serum. So just wanted to make sure people understood that. Yeah. And powders is just straight vitamin C in its raw form. Yes. This is very stable. That's how we, when you buy uh, vitamin C as a raw material, that's what it comes in because the crystal form, it's like having salt crystals, right? Like yeah. it's it's going to chill there for forever. Yes. But I will say the downside to that is A, you don't really know how much you're using and B, a lot of companies sell it for really cheap and it's 100% form. Cool. Like in crystal form. In crystal form. So it has it has issues dissolving into your products mm-hmm. or your they end up instructing you to mix it uh, or like dump it into another product and then it's going to start degrading anyway. Um, and then lastly, it's because as we mentioned in the first deco, vitamin C has really low pH. Yeah. Most of these come in raw form. So when you're mixing in with your serum, you're creating something that can be pH. We're talking as low as like a two or yeah. something. So you're actually accidentally creating something that your skin might be sensitized to. So that's why it's kind of like a... It's not done super well. Yeah, and I was also going to say a lot of formulas, I guarantee you, are not robust enough to handle a low pH. Oh, yeah. We can attest to that. Yes. Yeah, a lot of those emulsions and whatnot, they're just not meant for that. And you, that's one thing to pay attention to when you use powders is just seeing your general formula change. Any sign of that is a pretty clear sign it is dying and not compatible. We're talking about... (laughs) Gel to water transformations, <laughs> cream to curdled cream transformation. Yeah, curdled All that cream stuff. is very bad. <laughs> Sometimes you even see color changes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, we would say if you just don't, you just want to like an easy, like, I don't want to think about it. Just choose a water-based serum. That's yeah. probably your tried and true. Mm-hmm. And then just go through it diligently. Yes. That's it. <laughs> Rapidly. <laughs> Mominos. <laughs> yes. Okay, the second question um, is a residual from our sunscreen challenge. This was about our last sunscreen we trialed, which happened to be a very popular one that was requested. This person writes, I found Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen to be a great primer. It's my go-to as a layer underneath my makeup. Is there any worries there? I guess this is um, generally if you use your sunscreen as a primer and layering over with makeup. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I was waiting for you to answer okay, okay. this I, I have one thought. Okay. Uh-huh. I, I can totally, after testing it, I will say, yes, I can totally see how it is a fantastic primer because that thing is just dimethyl. <laughs> yeah. But I have one worry and it's not even about layering under makeup. It's that are people applying this as a primer? Because that's really terrifying because I... Think about the amount you apply as a primer. It's very different. Yeah. I would say it's significantly less than a sunscreen. And that would be the only thing where I'm like, are you applying enough? Yeah, that's that's kind of our thing with a lot of um, hybrid formulas in general is you are most likely under applying and something like a primer, like the everyone loves to say a little bit goes a long way when they describe a yes. product right like for example our, our mr reliable moisturizer a little bit goes a long way bon fantastic voyage. very very moisturizing cool not the descriptor you want for your sunscreen yeah because these are weighted out to give you that efficacy yeah and when i think about primer i'm i'm not someone that wears a lot of base makeup so i don't have a ton of experience using primer but when i do use it it's a very thin layer yeah. it's like barely a not even a dime size it's like a teeny tiny amount just as long as i can spread a thin layer over yes. my face that's good enough for me yes and i can tell you that the super group on things not it's something that if i apply like that sure it's an okay texture but it's not something i'm gonna want to use two fingers full yeah exactly so i think that was just it's also our check-in with you guys like mm-hmm. is are how much of these kind of primer sunscreens are people actually using because I think that that's really the only issue. Like, it totally makes sense that it could layer well under makeup. So I'm not even worried about that aspect. But that's the part where I was just like, I'm very worried. Yeah, so I would say on makeup days, yeah, that's not, it's okay to layer like that. But don't expect it to give you 
the uh the proper coverage yeah the coverage and the protection level that's stated on the packaging mm -hmm. wear a hat i guess <laughs> <laughs> Which seems like it goes against the whole wearing makeup thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't know what to say. Don't spend that much time on those days. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good point. But anyways, um, yeah, that's the end of our episode on decoding vitamin C's in 2023. Where can they find us, Gloria? You can find us on our website at chemistconfessions.com that has recently got a facelift. Hope you guys like it. Anyway, you can also write to us at info at chemistconfessions.com. DM us on Instagram at chemist.confessions. Check us out on TikTok. Don't write to us on TikTok. Please, please don't. <laughs> Comment on this video below and we will see you guys next week. Woohoo! Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.